Hey, no more blessings upon you. Send a shout of blessings to you and your house. Please share the broadcast and be a blessing. Opie, wow, you can imagine coming late, that late. <laughs> All right, we'll be talking to you very soon. Please share the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. All right, well, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad. Blessed morning to you as well. Blessed morning to you. Uh, it's been a Friday edition of Faith Moment. There's a word that we're going to find out today, okay? So um, let's go straight out because we some few minutes behind schedule, but I uh, will try to um, catch up and land right on time. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to minister your word. I pray that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely, uninterrupted, or unhindered by any religious force. Cause your people to be in a position of understanding to know you by your word. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, I want to talk to you about knowing god knowing god i want to talk to you about knowing god how do you know god how do you come to know god Penki chinario send a shout of blessings to you in india how do you know god bible helps us to know god by god's word we get to know the word of god by his word bible tells us in john chapter 1 Come with me to John chapter 1. Let's look at um, knowing the word of God. John chapter 1. All right. Knowing God through his word. Knowing God through his word. Okay. Yeah. Norma, good morning to you again. How do you know God? If somebody asks you this question, how do you know God? What's your answer? Hi, Tommy, you send a shout of blessings to you and your house. If somebody asks you, how do you know God? What's going to be your answer? How do you know God? Well, just in case you don't have an instant answer, well, let me put, put you or position you to help you out with it. It's very simple. You know God by his word. Look at John chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 1. Okay, let's look at John chapter 1. Just the first verse uh, for now. Look at John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Watch this very carefully. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So how do you come to know God? You know God by His Word. You see the simplicity of, of, uh, of it all. Stephanie sent a shout of, we sent a shout of blessings to you and your house. If somebody asks you, do you know God? Your answer should be very simple. Yes, I know God by his word. He, God, is the word of he himself. God is the word of he himself. John chapter 1, verse 1. Look at it again. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, your answer to the question of, do you know God? Yes, I do know Him. I know Him by His Word. Because God is His Word. And His Word is He. And as we see here, in the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. You see, look at the 14th verse. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Michael Lewis, we send a shout of blessings to you and your house. Look at it. Verse 14 of John chapter 1. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, the full of grace and truth. 
So when somebody asks you this question, do you know God? Well, if you read his word, you will know that God is his word and his word is him. Straight, straight up, straight up. Do you know God? Yes, I do know God. How do you know him? He is his word and his word is him. In the beginning was the word and the word was with him and the word was him. Hallelujah. Are you getting that revelation here? Get that revelation. I mean, this is straight, straightforward, straight up and beautiful. I love this. Knowing God is knowing his word because his word is him. Oh, I know I'm messing somebody. So I'm messing you up already. It's as simple, y'all. Knowing God is knowing his word because his word is him. Get our revelation here. So it's very, very important for you to understand this. So when you are put to that question at any time, you supposed to be able to answer the question without any hesitation, without any delays, without wasting any time. Are you getting the revelation here? It's very, very important because if you don't do it, it's like, okay, do you know God? Um, I have not seen him before. I thought I saw him yesterday. I wasn't sure if that was him. All those, beloved, you don't need to just go all over the place. Straight up, you know him. And if you do not know him, I am giving you, you know, um, an angle for which you will come to know who he is. You got to know God. Beloved, you just have to know who he is. God is him, his God is his word, and his word is him. That is why it's so important that you have to know the word of God. That is why it's important that you have to study the word of God. That is why it's important that you have to read the word of God. That is how you get to know him. The Bible, as we know, it's an inspired, infallible word of God. Let me repeat that. The Bible is the infallible, inspired word of God. Jerry Sanders will send a shout of blessings to you and your house. All right? So if somebody asks you, do you know God? Yes, I know. Beloved, it's not, it's not that yeah, I've been a Christian for 100 years. It's not about how long you've been going to church. You have to know God by understanding that God is his word and his word is him. Straight up in John chapter one, as we see there, you see, you look at John chapter one again, in the beginning was the word. Where are we going to find out what word is that? And who is this word? And the word was with God, get a revelation here. And the word was God. So if you didn't know who the word, what the word is or who the word is, and the word being with God, well, who is, who is with God? Well, it's God himself. It's God himself. So God is his word. And his word is him. I hope you get it in the revelation here. This should not be anything confusing to you. Straightforward to know that God is himself. That's why sometimes you hear, it says, you see, you hear that God is himself. That's right. God is himself because he's who he is. <laughs> you see, remember, remember he told uh, Moses was asking that uh, if I get to Pharaoh in um, 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 Egypt and Pharaoh asks me, so who is this God? You just tell Pharaoh that I am that I am. I am that I am. I am whoever he thinks I am. I am whatever. Oh, Lord, I tell you. I am getting some revelation here. I am who I am and I am who I am. It's, it's almost like, okay, what are you saying? All that I'm saying, the simplicity of it is you ought to know who God is by knowing his word 
is him. And John chapter 1 verse 1 tells you and I. And just in case that is not even so clear, look at the 14 verse again. And it says, And the word therefore became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh oh, that's the person of the whole, that's the person of Jesus. And he and we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Who is the only begotten of the Father? Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth. I was sharing with somebody the other day. I said, What you hear about grace, 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 uh, 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 grace, uh, 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 a course you are taking a grace course beloved there ain't nothing like taking the grace course jesus is grace himself get that revelation here jesus is grace look at john look at john look at the, the 17 verse look at 17 verse of john for the law was given through moses but grace and truth by christ jesus Grace and truth by Christ Jesus. Jesus is grace himself. Hallelujah. So when you hear about grace and, you know, grace, 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 beloved, there ain't nothing like, you know, taking six, six, four, six steps to grace, 14, um, um, you know, somersaulting for grace and, and all those. Jesus is grace as God is the word himself. Straight up. You don't need to go around and try to confuse yourself and all that. So to know who God is and to answer the question, do you know God? You got to have that answer right here. Yes, I know him by, by, his, by the fact that he is his word and his word is him. Beloved, this is why it's so important for you to study the word of God. This is why it's so important for you to read the word of God. Listen, if you are listening to me right now and you do not have the word of God, we call a Bible. I call it the manual for daily life and living. If you do not have one, please make sure that you, you, you send me a request for a Bible. We'll send one to you free of charge, free of charge. All right. Go to our YouTube, um, um, YouTube channel, you can do that, but go to our website, or the website address is www.patrickquaino, Q-U-A-I-N-O-O, -O, Global Ministries, go to that website and request one a Bible through that site, or you can call this number, okay, you can also call 914-572-9816, you can get a, a copy, all right, but very important, I came to let you know and to, for you to understand this. This is so, so, so important that you got to know, you have to know this. Very, very important. Now, let's look at something in um, uh, first, Peter, first Peter. Look at, uh, no, Second Peter chapter 1. Look at Second Peter chapter 1 and the third verse. Look at Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Okay. As his, watch this now. Look at, look at uh, Second Peter chapter 1. Look at that, look at that. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Through the knowledge. That's why it's important that you must have knowledge of what we're talking about here. God. You must have that knowledge. You must. And that has been given through to us through, watch this now. His divine power has given to us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by, by virtue and by glory. Get that revelation here. Look at um, Second Peter again. Look at the uh, verse, verse uh, Second Peter three. Look Second Peter three. Look at the eighteen verse. Second Peter 
3, look at the 18 verse. Look at the 18 verse. 2 Peter 3, 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus and Savior. Let me read that again. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow, 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 grow in Him. To Him be glory both now and forevermore. To Him be the glory both now and and forevermore. So in other words, you must know God through Christ Jesus by growing in him. How do you grow in him? By following him, by getting closer to him, by studying him. If you don't, listen, if you are not closer to somebody, you, ain't, you are not going to know that person. You will, you will know of that person from afar. But you cannot tell me that you know me and you are not that close to me. No. How often do we talk? Do you know what tickles me? Do you know what makes me upset? Do you know what I like and I don't like? All these things can be known when you are closer. Okay? That relationship is a bit closer. That is the same way you get to know God by knowing him through studying of his word. Reading of his word. If you don't do that, you will not know God. You cannot tell me you don't. A lot of people say, I know God. Oh, yeah. No, it's not how long you go to church. It's not how long you said that you were a Christian. It's a personal relationship, intimate relationship, that you cultivate with him. And the venue or the avenue for you to do that is by knowing his word. Why? Because... He is his word, and his word is him. Are you getting the revelation here? God is his word, and his word is him. So if you don't read his word, how are you going to know him? Tell me, how would you know him? You would know of him. It's okay. Yeah, you can know of something. Does not mean you know that thing. You know of me. You don't know me. I know of you. I don't know you. There's no relationship. Those who are who are closer to me, they know me. They know certain things that you know other people do not know. Example, I like to crack my jokes. You don't know that. You don't even know the type of jokes that I crack. It's the same way if you are not closer, you will not know. Scripture says, as, uh, says that get be closer to me and I will be closer to you. God says, come closer. Come closer. That is the way you get to know God. You see, the children of Israel did not, they knew of him. They knew of God. But Abraham knew him. Bible says that he had face-to-face -face conversation with Abraham, but with the children of Israel, he reveals his, you know, uh, miracles and other things to them. For you to know God, you have to come closer. You got to get closer. And that applies to anybody or anything for that matter. And so here, you see that, Look at it. You got to grow in him. He says, um, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in the grace. And who is the grace we're talking about? Christ Jesus. Jesus is grace. Again, when you hear about grace, 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 beloved, is Jesus. Don't, 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 you know, think so far. <laughs> like this young guy would say, don't think so far. Don't think far away. Grace is so close. That's Jesus. Look at John chapter 1, 17 again. So grow in Jesus. Thank you, OP. Grow in Jesus and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Grow, grow, grow in grace. Grow. I send a shout of blessings to you, Rose. Um, 
and your house. Grow in Jesus because Jesus is grace. So grow in grace and the knowledge of, just in case you don't know who grace is, here, it's telling you who grace is. The knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when you grow in grace or when you grow in Jesus, you get to know God even the more. Why? Because he is the replica, the representative of God himself. Ranel, send a shout of blessings to you and your house. You see, this is very important for you to understand. It is not, beloved, I have nothing against you going to church or being in church for a thousand years. I have nothing against that. But you'll be surprised to find somebody who said, I've been going to church for a hundred years and still do not know God. You ask them, who is God? And if the answer does not come just like that, mm. because if you know something, if you know something that is so close to you, it doesn't take, it doesn't take that long for you to just say, yes, I do know that person. And so for you to know God, you must know his word. Why? Because God is his word and his word is him. Get that revelation here. God is his word and his word is him. So he and his word are the same. Look at John chapter 1 verse 1 again. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The word was him himself. And he has not changed. He's still the same yesterday, today and forever. Remember the word of God or the Bible. God inspired man to put these things in there for you and I. To know him. I told somebody yesterday. For you to understand the word is for you to engage the spirit of God to give you the, the real meaning of what God is saying. If not, you would take the, the, the word of God on face value and you're going to be missing a whole lot. How do I know that? Let me show you to you. Come with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 all right first corinthians chapter 2 look at the 11th verse look at um look at the 10th verse the 10th 11th and 12th look at it but god has revealed them to us through his spirit okay for the for the spirit searches all things yes even the deep things of god for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit that is in him get that revelation here Okay, even though, except the spirit that is in him, even so, no one knows the things of God, except the spirit of God. So it has to take the spirit of God to give you the clear and the perfect understanding of what God is saying. Remember, God is his word and his word is him. So for you to know God, you must know his word. Huh? And for you to understand his word, you need his spirit to reveal or to tell you his word, the meaning of his word. If not, you go, I hope, I hope you are, I hope I'm making sense to somebody here. It is, listen, it is as simple as ABC. Like, you know, my, my, my guy, a haircut guy would say straight up, straight up. All right. God is his word and his word is him. So for you to know God, you must know his word. Get that revelation here. And so this is how you get to and also understand his word through or by his spirit. Without that, beloved, this is why it's, it's, a, it's, it's a mystery. It's a revelation. You see, so all that I'm saying to you is that spend time with the word of God. Spend time in the word so that you can get to know him and you can quickly tell somebody that, yes, I do know God. I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about 
personal relationship. That's what I'm talking about here. I hope that makes sense to you. If you understand that, say amen. Now, look at verse 10 again, 1 Corinthians. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. His spirit. For the spirit of God searches all things. Yes, even the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man that is in him? Get that revelation here. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received, get that revelation here now, get ready. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by who? By God. Hallelujah. May I love this. May I love this one. It has been freely, 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 freely given to us. There's no consultation fee. There's no, you know, uh, knock, knock door kind of fee. This is given to us freely by God. Hallelujah. By his spirit. Amen. And you get to know this when you get closer to him. How do you get closer to God? By reading his word. And so let me repeat myself again. If you are listening to me and you do not have uh, the word of God, which we call the Bible. I call it the manual for daily life and living. If you don't have one, please request one from this ministry. We will send one to you free of charge. Free of charge. Don't have to pay nothing. Why? Because it's being freely given to us. Get that revelation here. <laughs> Look at verse 12 again. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. Huh? That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Hallelujah. Man. Woo. Look at, look at verse 13. These things we also speak in the words which man's wisdom teaches, by which the Holy Spirit teaches. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit, which the Spirit of God teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Are you getting the revelation here? So it's very important for you to understand that to know God is for you to get closer to Him. Like I said, those who are closer to me, they can tell one or two things about me. But you who are far away, you don't know nothing about me. You only know of me. You see, you can know of something, it's not the same as knowing that thing. And so, I gave you an example. As Moses, God says, for Moses, I, 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 I meet him face to face. You see, I talk. But the children of Israel, I only show them, you know, my little attributes here and there. So the children of, of Israel were always telling Moses, Moses, you are the one who know God. You talk to him for us. As for us, we are far away. <laughs> but beloved, you don't have to be far away. You don't need nobody to talk to God for you. Oh, man, I think I'm going to mess up somebody's religion over here. You do not need nobody to talk to God for you. You can talk to God yourself. You know why? Because Jesus, Jesus is the mediator. Jesus is the way. For you and I to get to God. Jesus. Jesus. Look, look at John chapter 14. Come let me show you. Let me show you to you. Let me show you to you. I want to show you to you. I, 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 I you know what? I, uh, look at, look at John. Look at John. Look at John. Look at John. 14 verse 6. Look at. This is a response Jesus gave to Thomas. This is a response Jesus gave to Thomas. Let's look at verse 5. Thomas asked Jesus, he said, Lord Jesus, he says, Lord, we do not know where you say you are going and how can we know the way? Listen to what Jesus told him. Jesus says, Thomas, he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
You see the revelation here. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one. And as always, I'm always going to add this, this thing to it. That nobody on the face of this earth has said that Jesus was wrong by saying that. Nobody. I am still open. If you know anybody, please let me know. Who has, who, who has said, you know, contrary to what Jesus has said. If not, then it stands that Jesus is the way, the truth and life. So you see, if you need anybody for that matter, for which you can get to God himself, it's through Jesus. Are you getting the revelation here? I know I'm messing somebody's, you know, way of uh, whatever today. I don't know who you are, but listen, you do not need nobody. You don't need no pray for me business. You can talk to God through Christ Jesus. That is why you have to know Jesus. When you hear about grace, 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 is Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus is grace. Oh, his grace is sufficient for me. In other words, Jesus is sufficient for you. And Jesus must be sufficient for you. You know why? Because you are complete. If you have received him as Lord and Savior, then you are complete in him. Look at first first um Chronicles, first Chronicles chapter chapter 10. Look at first Chronicles chapter 10, uh, 2 verse 10. First Chronicles 2 10. You're gonna see that there. Let's go there real quick. Let's go there real quick. I want to I want to show you something real quick and I'll let you go. Look at First Chronicles. Look at First Chronicles. Come with me to First Chronicles. <clears throat> All right. Look at that. Look at that. Very, very, very. I mean, this is very powerful. First Chronicles two ten. All right. First Chronicles. So, col what a minute. Did that? Did that say col Colossians? Come with me to. Col <laughs> That's what happens. I think it got to be something there I need to check out. Look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Colossians chapter 2. Look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. All right? And that is, that is your completeness is in Christ Jesus. Look at Colossians. All right? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. And you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principalities and powers? Get that revelation here. You see, so if you are listening to me and you know that you have not made Jesus, you have not received him as your Lord and Savior, you have to do that. This is the, your first step of getting closer to God, of being able to pray to God yourself, talk to God, ask him whatever. You see, you don't need to be, you know, Going all over the place, asking people, pray for me, pray for me, pray. Most of the time, they're not even praying. They just give you that lip service. They're not. I've seen. <laughs> Man, listen, I used, to be, I used to be there where some of you were. And you ask somebody until the Lord made me caught some people that have asked them to pray for me. They were men doing their own thing, minding their own business when I thought they were praying for me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. It will put you in the right perspective because, see, most people do not care what is so important to you. Most people do not care. Beloved, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Most people do not care what is so important to you. So you must have that relationship, okay, with God through Jesus for yourself. For yourself. You better listen to me. I'm giving you advice and I, it, it, there's nothing in return for that. I am telling you, this is, this is free consultation, like somebody says. Amen. So get this revelation here. You have to, I'm not saying that don't call nobody to pray for you or, or join you in prayer. Because scripture says, if any two, any two, two would touch and agree, would touch and agree. Touch and agree. Whatever they ask of the Father, it will be done. It will be done. So I'm not saying don't ask nobody to pray for you or pray with you. But I am saying that don't make it a habit that you just go to sleep and ask somebody to pray for you. They may not be doing it. 
And by the way, you just can ask somebody to pray for me, and you you just go and 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 go and sleep. Because if any two will touch and get, so in, you know, in other words, when you ask me to pray with you, you don't just leave that on me whilst I'm praying and you doing something else. Any two, not one, two will touch and agree. Am I making sense to somebody? I, ho I hope and I pray so. So listen, give me, if you have not made Jesus, therefore, your Lord and Savior. You have that opportunity to do that now. How do you do that? You believe him in your heart. The Bible says. And that's how we believe. We believe with our heart. And we, we, we make a confession with our mouth. This, this time is concerning your salvation. Your salvation. So let's do that prayer right now. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. I repent of my sins of unbelief. Of you. Now I have a better understanding. I believe you in my heart and I confess you with my mouth that God raised you from the dead. You died because of me and my sins and you paid the price with your precious blood. Now I receive you in my heart and I thank you. Now baptize me with your spirit. The Holy Spirit, the one who searches all things and know even the deep things of God, baptize me with him to dwell with me and to be in me that he may guide me to all truth. I thank you for hearing me. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen. Beloved, that's it. That's it. Now, don't let it go. Don't just throw it away. Keep it, receive it, keep it in you. Knowing that Jesus has heard your prayer. God has heard it. Now, this is your beginning step. Of getting closer to God. Read your Bible. Like I said, if you don't have one, can afford find one or afford one, reach out to us. Okay, we will send you a Bible. Wherever you are, we will send you one. Very important. We will send you a Bible. It's so so important. So please reach out to us. We'll send you one. How do you get to us? Go to our our website address is ww Patrick. Quino, Q U A I N O O, Patrick Quino, Global Ministries dot org, dot O R G, and then subscribe or request for one, one request for a Bible. We we'll send you one. I also want to send you to our YouTube channel. Okay, go to the YouTube channel and subscribe there, free of charge. This way you can get these messages among other messages that will be coming. There are a lot of messages there that will help you to understand, increase your understanding and grow. Get that as well and be able to also get notifications when live broadcast is on like this. Enjoy the, your weekend. Tell other people, share the broadcast with your friends and loved ones. And uh, always remember, you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. I thank you for making time. And I'll see you soon. God bless you.